Can you say amen? Amen. Oh, sit down, oh Lord. Praise the Lord of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Well, as the Lord has been giving me encouragement as the days go by, I keep finding myself coming back to John chapter number five. And the Bible said, is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Any afflicted, let him pray. You know what you do when you're afflicted? You pray. What does affliction look like? Well, it's the trials and the tribulations of the today. It's what we go through. We pray. We seek the face of God. It says, let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Well, that's what we're doing. Can you say amen? I love singing for the Lord. You'd be walking down the street still singing for God. You could be walking in Walmart still singing for God. You could be in the family dollar and singing amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Woo! Praise the Lord of glory. But then we get to the point where the power of God comes to a man who believes. Where the power of God comes to a church who believes. Is any sick among you? Come on. Is any sick among you, the Bible says, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And, listen to this church, that and connects this verse to this verse, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So, church, I'm going to ask you right now, is there any sick among you? Is anybody sick? Does anybody need to be anointed with oil right now? You sure can, little lady. Come on with it. You know, every time I've opened up with this verse, there's been somebody come up and say, can you please anoint in the name of Jesus? Praise the Lord of glory. Let's stand up here together. She's going to be standing in for my son. Uh, he's running a fever right now. And we're just needing God to heal, we're needing God to touch, needing God to make a way, needing God to move in right now and heal. I know he's done it. He said, well, that's your son, preacher. This, this, this preacher's kids get sick. Oh, you better believe they get sick. Not only do they get sick, but I think at times they get attacked by the devil even more so. Try to get them to fall, try to get to the hearts of the men and the women who love God. But I believe as my beautiful daughter is going to stand in for my wonderful son. I believe God's going to touch him right where he's at. Amen. He say amen. How many of you believe God's able to do that? Dear Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you once again. And my Lord, as I lift this prayer up to you, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus. For my son right now is trusting you, a good boy, a young man, who has great things that he's going to do for you. I believe it, Lord. But Lord, I'm not coming in that greatness. I'm not coming in that ability. But I'm coming in through faith there, Lord, taking a step of faith. Lord, and you said right now that faith there, God, that is what touches you. So I'm asking you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, to touch my boy. Help him right now. In the name of Jesus, touch his body. Take away that fever and let it be no more. For you have already healed the sick, God, in my family. You have already made a way where there seemed to be no way. You have already gone meet every need, and today is no different. So I'm asking you, God, once again, all in the name of Jesus, I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe. Praise the Lord of glory, I believe. Hallelujah. Saint, you are a liar and the father of it. You are a liar, God. I'm asking you to rise up a standard against that devil that tries to come in and sell lies, tries to bring in discouragement. I'm asking you, Father, the kingdom of our back in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord of lords. Praise the King of kings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In His name, His power, and His authority. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, brother, together in the name of Jesus. Two for one. He's praying for his family, praying for himself, and praying for his wife. In the name of Jesus. I so want to Lord. Oh, 
voice as she's here. Let her hear your voice as she's here. In the name of Jesus, I call us Oh, in Jesus' name we pray. And the church says amen. And amen and amen. Praise the Lord of glory. Just by a shout of hallelujah, if God's ever touched your body through prayer, and you know that's what it's been right now, say hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Sister Diane, that's right. Praise the Lord. Have an issue with her kidneys? Thank God and move in and step in and heal in the name of Jesus. My Lord, Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for this body. I thank you for this life. Touch my sister in the name of Jesus. A miracle right now, church. That's what we need. We need God to step in and touch Sister Diana in the name of Jesus. I'm praying. Praise the Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the person is hurting. One part of the body is hurt. We're all hurting. And we're needing God to move in. Hasakul Amnesh. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord of glory. Church is going to do it. Church is going to do it. Church is going to do it. Praise the Lord. I serve a mighty God. I serve a mighty God. I serve a mighty God. I serve a God that's able. I serve a God that's able to do exceeding. I serve a God that's able to do exceeding abundantly. I serve a God that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask. Or even thank God I love you. Praise the Lord of Lord. Just for a little while longer, church. Let's praise him. If you got a need in your life and you know that God's able to touch you, God's able to heal you, God's able to help you, lift your hand right now and say, God, it's me. It's me. I know sometimes shyness has a tendency to pull people back. But I promise you, God can meet you right where you're at. Lift up your hands, church. Make a way, church. Make a way right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Yeah. I thank the Lord that I'm in the house tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Right now, I just want everybody to uh, point their hands toward me and let's pray. Right. To help you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for being in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you all your hands in my hand. Lord, I ask you all your hands in my hand. Hallelujah. God, you know that when you brought me from whatever. I thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. 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 <laughs> well, I'm going to read over here from um, a very scripture in uh, Psalms 23. I just want y'all to just pay attention. It says, the, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, the shepherd, like Corey's a shepherd, you know. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. They prepare us a table before me. Here's, here's my table right there. In the presence of my enemies, thou shalt anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. And uh, the scripture that I'm going to go with is... Uh, this is Psalms 23 and 4. Ye though I walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. You know, that shadow. We, we might be in a valley tonight. Yes, you know, uh, yes. that devil ain't nothing but a liar. You know? yes. we, we will fear, fear no evil. You know, just think about that, that fear, the love of God. You know, for thou art with me, thy rod and the staff comfort me. So I, I looked up broad, and uh, it says, was a natural symbol of authority as yes. a tool used by a shepherd to correct and guide his flock. You know, that that, that rod is, you know, yes. the staff is the rod. You know, I'll get to that. And, uh, and I, I put a, a scripture to come to my mind, you know, because he tries to keep us straight, you know. Yeah, he does. Matthew 7 and 14. Because the straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leads me unto the life, and few there be that find it. In a staff, it says, the staff represents all that is long, suffering, and kind. The staff is a long, slender stick, often with a crook or hook on one end. Well, I think about that that staff, you know. It's, it's a hook, you know. Yes. You know when you when you fall on that that pit, uh -huh. you know Psalm forty and two, it says, "He brought me out of of the and horrible pit, yeah. out of a murdered clay, and set my feet up on a rock and established my goals." Right. You know, uh, he pulled me out of that horrible pit. You know. Uh, where would I be if he didn't? Where we uh, I wouldn't be here today talking to you right now. Uh, you know, it says here in uh, Comfort, uh, Second Chronicles uh, 1 and 3, it says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of and all, all comfort. So, you know, you know, uh, Corey's a shepherd here. He's trying to, you know, lead us in the right way. What he he's praying, you know. You can't do nothing without praying. You know, come on, before man. you come to church, you should be here to pray, you know. For us to have it, you know, it's him to be the shepherd. But it's, as a church, as one, we gotta come together, we gotta pray. If you want to have us a revival, 
You got to come pray. You got to lay before the Lord. Come on. You're delaying the goods. Yeah. I mean, this is the table right here. This is the sacrifice. Yeah. You know, it, it's, a, it's a rock. Just like David, when he went down to that, uh, that, that stream, you know, to pick up the five smooth stones. You know, and he had a good fight of Goliath. Come on, brother. No, he, he put it in that slime and he was war in the swirl and hit that uh, life in the middle. You know, killed him dead right there. You know, we come up to this altar all the time. Yes, we got fear. You know, God don't want us to fear. He wants us to be humble. Right? Yes. He wants yes. To, he wants you to put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Right? He wants you to <laughs> He wants you to swing this sword right here. Come on. You know. You know, that devil's a liar. He's a father of none. I'm glad the boy said that because, you know what? I gave the devil a black eye last night. You know, he filled me with the Holy Ghost. Again last night. Praise the Lord. Come on. I thank God because, you know, I've been Hallelujah. in the valley lately. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, you know, I was just getting mad. Just out, you know, everybody, you know, I just, just I didn't backslide just yeah. in the valley. But you know what? Devil, you're a liar. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. Yes. All you got to do is stand up and not be ashamed of him. Worship him. And he'll fall down on you. You just got to keep on worshiping. You got to keep on praying. Yeah, I say that a lot. If you walk in here and walk out and say, that's your choice. But my choice is to serve God. Come on. All my Come on. Because he'll never leave you or forsake you. I just thank God. Yeah. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Right on. Come on. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise right now. Let's stand up with you. Dear Father, we love you. Praise you. We thank you for this life. We thank you for this testimony. We thank you for this love. We thank you for this hope. Thank you for this word. Thank you for this power. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for your second chance, your third chance, your fourth chance. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the blood. For I plead the blood right now. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Amen. Let's sing another one of them hymns. Oh, come on. Page 268. I'm on the battlefield. Oh, that's good.
Amen, amen. You know, even here in this offering, we're still on the battlefield. Come on. Come on now. You know, I just, this past week, you know, my beautiful wife and I, as we step out in faith, and we grab a hold of this ministry by both rings. You see, before I had one ring over here and one ring over there. I had a, a security blanket, if you will, just because I figured, hey, I've got to do what i got to do. <laughs> <laughs> but then I found something out that time is much more important than money. Come on. Can I get an amen? Amen. I don't care how much money you have, there are people that give all their riches just for another year on this planet. They will. Yep. And I found something out that I must live by faith and not by sight. Come on. I found out that if I seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto me. And I do know the reason why I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. And I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on. By God Almighty. And that is to be a father. Amen. To be a husband. And to be a pastor. Hallelujah. And you say amen. Amen. I'll tell you when God saved me, he saved me for purpose. Just as he saved us for purpose. Each and every one of you have a purpose. What is that purpose? Well, ask God. He'll tell you. You'd be surprised when he'll let you know. He'll let you know the truth. Can you say amen? Come on. And in that truth, that truth will make you free. Yep. And I'll tell you, since my last couple weeks of being off, retired, or not really retired, resigning, I didn't quit. Can you say amen? Resigned. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ain't no quitting. I'll tell you, Brother Bowers, that's not the same thing. I'll tell you right now, I've worked harder than I <laughs> with both ends of it. Still steady at it. But I thank God for it. Because with all the ketchup, you know, you never get to the mustard. That's what I found out. So you just keep on going all the way through. With all the ketchup, Brother Wadley, you never get to the mustard. Praise the Lord. But with that being said, before I listen to this anymore, I want to thank everybody for giving as they have. I just want you to know, church, that the bills are paid. Can you say amen? I want you to know that the bills are paid, but also vision is in. With the vision in, we're still going to continue on and do what God has called us to do. This little church over here has supplied many, many families, many missionaries, those that are struggling with that in between. Here you go to help you along your way. And that's what a church is supposed to be. Brother Waldo, one of my prayers is this. When the rapture happens, there's about 10 cent over there. And that bank account. And you say amen. That's what I'm looking for. Just know, you know, and that 10 cent was just recently put in there. And it was put in there in such a way that's the way people can just know. That something was there. Can you say amen? And what it is, it's going to be that dollar that come out. Somebody paid tithes on the dollar that they just got. And there's 10 cent in there. And that's the last bit about it. Woo! Praise the Lord of glory. How many of you know that God can do that? That's what my prayer is, just as it is. So when I start seeing it get slim, and it gets down to that last 10 cent church, be packed and ready. Because the Lord's going to come and get us. Praise the Lord. Ain't keeping nothing left behind. I ain't going to let that devil use anything. Hallelujah. I ain't going to let him use anything. Go ahead, Brother Wall. Stand up and pray over this offer.
sweet face are familiar. Full of hope, of evil, any more. Oh, our Lord, to the heart is right. If our friend, thou weeps are right. Lord, I live. Bring me his own. Take a few. He may have his money and take a call. Be the bright light, guys.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord of glory. Hey, what a privilege it is to go ahead and praise the King. What a privilege it is to go ahead and sing. What a privilege it is to be in the house of God tonight. Brother David, where else would we be if we were here in the house of God? If it wasn't for the Lord reaching way down and grabbing a hold of our hearts, I thank God for that saving grace. I thank the Lord for stepping in and inviting me to be a part of this fold. What a blessing it is. If that devil's been fighting you and you know it's been the devil fighting you, lift your hands right now in victory and say, he's taking no more ground. Amen. I said, that devil's taking no more ground. I'm holding fast. I'm standing fast. I'm believing fast. I might even have to fast. But I'm going to go ahead and trust him right now and let him know that it is the God of all glory that not only is holding me, but he's holding me together. Not only is he holding me together, but he's giving me everything I need. Not only is he giving me everything I need, he is all that I need. And knowing that he's all that I need, that devil can't even hold me. Come on. Why? Because it is the Lord, God Almighty, who is my all in all, my everything. It's him. Praise be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go ahead and get into this lesson. I'm about ready to preach right now. Praise the Lord of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister Ann, you want to share a word? Go ahead, sister. Go ahead, sister. My testimony is run yeah, there you go. That's all she can do right now. Praise the Lord. Woo! Praise the Lord of glory. Amen. Amen. Yeah. She was Dominica. Yeah. One and Daisy. Yes. And you know, one is a Lord who kept me. Yes. My house and Daisy. And I just got home. And I really got down when I took it to them. And the other one is a Lord who says to me, Lord. Son, I looked in the wallet. I said, We got six dollars and fifty cents for me and you to eat lunch. You ready? It was a fun for him. 
So we went down there to that old Dollar General, Family Dollar. We walked through there and they had pizza pockets for $1.25. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Lord have mercy. I said, well, give me one of these Philly cheese steak pizza pocket. You know, some of you might be like, well, I know what I'm about to tell you here. When I was a kid, I never liked sardines. Never liked them. But boy, I tell you what, I grew up a little bit. And I said, man, for $1.25 and sardines looking pretty good. Praise the Lord. And glory. <laughs> what I'm telling you right now, I, and it's funny because I normally go fishing with that exact same thing I'm eating. I have a fish bait if I've ever seen it. But I can tell you, God blessed. Not only did he bless, but I had enough to go over there and get a box of one of those Nutty Buddy bars. Whoa, come on now. Just for dessert. So what are you saying, Pastor? For $6.50? Well, actually, it came to seven fifty. I found a little bit more. God went through and went ahead and fed two of us a meal and a half. And he supplied the need. Can you say amen? Not only did he supply the need, but it was enough to sustain until the next blessing come in. I'm going to tell you, the blessing came in. And the Lord's going to continue to do so. There's sometimes you just got to trust him and praise him and thank him. Even in those times of leanness, whether it's physical leanness, whether it's spiritual leanness, you got to still trust him in it. And still know that he's God. All the way. Brother Bartle, you want to say something? The Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we gotta pray. I pray. We if we want something. 
something from God. Yeah. No, you going you going to keep. Don't worry. No, I got it, brother. If you want something from God, you are going to have to pray. Amen. So to Jessica, you yeah. got to talk to God. Got to talk to him. If you don't get talk to him, come on. Come on. Yeah, it does. You, you're seeing it. What, what are you trying to tell me? Evidence. Come yeah. on. Evidence. Come on, brother. Hey, I'll tell you, he said it. I believe it. Me too, brother. I'll yeah. tell you what. I've seen God's power. Yeah. I, I prayed one time. Yeah. I said, God, show me your power. Show me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. One time he took me up, he picked me up out of the seat. Mm -hmm. And I just threw me yeah. in front. Yes. Come on, brother. So, wow, boy. Yeah. I just believed it. Boy, yeah. I was a young Christian then. Yeah. Oh, now. <laughs> no, I still feel somebody said, young, I still feel old. it. And, and, and I'm. 65 years old, I still feel it like when I was 20-something years old. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been serving God. All the way. I, I asked God, show me the power. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you how he showed me. Yeah. I had to do something, Brother Terry. Right. Yeah. But what I had to do is I had to pray. Yeah. I was praying. <laughs> I was fasting, Brother David. Yeah. I'm pushing uh -huh. that plate away. Yeah. Oh my, it's something like that's hard to do. That is, brother. I'm into a revival. Yes. I'm listening to this church. I've been praying this and praying it because, you know, I'm trying to, you know, see how this Holy Ghost really works. Mm -hmm. no. yeah. And I had it. I had the Holy Ghost. I, yeah. I got the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right? praise the Lord. I don't have 10%. I'm yeah. old. Come on now. This is not because the man weighed 300 something pounds. That's the Lord. But God put that man in my path. Yeah. He come up to the altar, Brother Gene. Yeah. And uh, I've been praying. I said, God, show me your power. Yeah. Hallelujah. No more. I picked up my hand. Yeah. That man went sailing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That blew my mind. Yeah. That, I said, God, I acknowledge your power. I you right there. I tell you, you, know, you, have to see. you got to pay a price. Yeah, you do, brother. Mm -hmm. You got to be faithful to this. Yeah. When you do that, God comes you, to you don't have to worry about them. He's going to answer you. Oh, they will. A big prayer, a little prayer. Yeah. He's answered a lot of little prayers, brother. Yeah. The yeah. Lord. Yeah. I tell you, I, I, this, this Bible here blows my mind. Yeah. Okay. If you want something from God, yeah. woo! Yeah, it's right coming. Now. Look at that Bible. It's coming, church. Look at that. Praise the Lord. hard to go back like it was new. It's coming, church. You look at my Bible. Come on, it's coming. I'm not bragging. I am bragging. You brag on Jesus, brother. You you read this Bible, it ain't going to be in the same condition when you when you get it. In the, got it brag on Jesus. Huh? Right. Uh, I to think this is my second or Amen. third one. My Bible's all marked up, brother Corey. Sharpen it, brother. Sharp. Yeah. I tell you, I implanted this. Yeah. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. You know what I did? I indoctrinated myself. I planted yeah. this word in my yeah. heart. Yeah. That's right. why, I, and I've said it, said it. I'm not bragging. That's why I know so many scriptures. Help them, Lord. I'm memorizing yeah. Sister Kelly. Put it in you. Hey, that Bible says, man yeah. shall not live a bread alone. Right. But every word that is seated out of the mouth of God. Yes. Yes. We gotta hide this in our heart. Come on, brother. The Bible you gotta memorize it. Huh? Amen. You're never gonna know nothing until you open this up and study. Right. Huh? Right. Yeah. I'm glad to be a church. I'm not ashamed of God. I'm not ashamed of your brother Corey. Right. Hey, I don't right. care right. what the skeptic said. Yes. I don't care what the doubters said. Yes. I love God, Sister Judy. Praise the Lord of Lord. Serving God. I love Hallelujah. the church. Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand up for you. Amen. I thank God for this service. And you say, Pastor, some, you know, I'm just not used to this. Well, I think a lot of what we've done is that we've allowed a thought process of religion to get into this thing. And when we know that there are gifts of the Holy Ghost alive in each of us that believe, and seek the face of God. We will see God's God's worth come through us. He's not coming back for an old dead stale church. 
You hear me? He's not, he's not coming back for something that's just you come in and, and, and just go through the motions. But I can tell you right now, he's coming back for his bride who is on fire, who is looking for his soon return. Sister Judy, I come here expecting God to move. I come here expecting God to perform miracles. And I pray, I'm seeing over here, with, I'm, I'm thinking about we're going to have to get that steam cleaner up here. And I don't know if this is oil that's dripping everywhere in this area, but there's little stains coming up. But I'll tell you right now, I'm glad that the oil still flowing to the church. Glad that it is. I'm all right having a few oil stains on the carpet. Can you say amen? Because I know that God is still moving. God is still healing. God is still blessing. God is still God. That's right. We'll have a little prayer corner over here and, and, and pull that oil over there. But church, I'm excited about this word, and I'm glad that the body's still alive. Now, just so you know, I recognize what time it is for all of you. Like, wow, it's getting late, but I don't care. I love you. Just so you know. <laughs> no, I recognize that. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be respectful. And uh, I just want, I, I want to let the Spirit of God lead me. What do you say we allow that to happen? Okay? And I promise you this. When you finish your plate, you'll be full. Okay? Galatians 5, verse 19. We have two more fruits of the Spirit we got to get through. And I'm only going to be able to get through meekness. <laughs> I can only, I can only, no, I only planned on it. Only planned on getting through meekness. And, uh, and then temperance is going to be the last. Now, these two last fruits is really what God would have his church to know and when you get to this point, you'll see a lot more people sticking to it, staying in it. Because we know that it is love that is first and foremost, and, and love opens the door. Because love is the door, who is Christ. But as you get to this, this meekness and this temperance, you're going to see that this is a fruit that you, 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 you hardly see matured in Christians. Okay? And um, we're going to get to a little bit of that right now. Because meekness and temperance deals with gentleness and discipline. Okay? <laughs> gentleness and discipline. You're going to say, I'm not talking about dead gentleness. You know? <laughs> There's some people just gentle, but they're just gentle because they're dead. They just don't care. You know? They just... <laughs> <laughs> they ain't doing nothing. They they just don't you know care about the, the the situation at hand. But then there's a gentleness that like Moses. Moses, the Bible says, he was the meekest man on the earth. <laughs> he said that about himself, evidently. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Numbers. Galatians 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Here's the work of the flesh. Adultery. Seen any of that going on? Come on, people make a lot of money for that. A lot of soap operas going on about adultery. Oh, Susie Joe over there with Bobby Ho again. There they are. Enjoying some time. Chinese man. Praise the Lord. Enjoying it. Being together. Fornication. There it is again. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. What is idolatry? Idolatry is worshiping anything but God. Okay? You don't have to be in that temple to be worshiping something else than God. It, people worship money. Okay? People worship shoes. People worship materialistic things. People worship their children. Yeah. Come on now. They'll, they'll go ahead and, and they'll compromise their faith for their children. Once you do that, and I'm telling you, you start to idolatize your children. Your children become your God. It's not the way it's supposed to be. But that is the way it happens. Now, y'all hold on, mamas, because I'm going to go ahead and help you through that. Because trying to navigate, because there's a difference between caring and loving it and idolatizing, idolatizing your kids. Okay, so just bear with me. So, it deals with idolatry, witchcraft, witchcraft. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies. So you see a lot of fighting. You see a lot of false doctrine in this day and age. You see a lot of works of the flesh. Now, as we see envyings, okay, everybody jealous about everybody right now. Keeping up, not with the Joneses anymore. It's not the Joneses. You're keeping up with the Kardashians. Okay. You're keeping up with, you know, those down the street. Murders, drunkenness, revelings. But look at this. It, it doesn't stop there. Paul just said, 
and such like. He's not limiting to all the works of the flesh to just this. But he says in such like of the which I tell you before. As I have also told you in times past. That they look at your neighbor and say that they which do such things shall not. Look at your neighbor again. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. Come on. Period. Come on. Period. Period. Ain't adding up and do that. Right. Not taking anything away. That's what it says. Now you have to pay attention to the pronouns. Because Paul is talking to the church. Yes. He's saying that they. They which do such things. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, the reason why I had to put it that way is because he's bringing in the contrast to the fruit of the Spirit. Now, these three verses right here, church, if you've ever wondered what sin looked like, if you ever wondered, God, what do you see sinful? What is the definition of sin? And, of course, the definition of sin is what they say, missing the mark, if you will. God has a holy standard of living, and if we miss that mark, we sin. Now, there is a nature of sin in each and every one of us. Uh, a tendency to go against the norm. A tendency to push against what is right. You see it in your children. Clean up your room. No! <laughs> you better come out! Ah! The baby possessed. Lord have mercy. How many of those kids you've seen in the grocery stores? You know, I want a candy. No, I want a candy. No, I want a candy. No. No. And then the little baby cusses at the mama. Oh, yeah. Lord have mercy. I'd like to <laughs> say, ma'am, we got to talk. <laughs> but it's cute then. It's cute when that four-year-old little baby's, oh, you bleep, 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 bleep. I don't mean nothing by that. Until he's 22 years old, 250 pounds, and looking at you in the face and saying that. Different story now, isn't it? So why do you say we go ahead and clip it while it's young? Can you say amen? That's why God says you need to honor your mother and your father. So your days may be long upon them. So your mother and father don't kill you. Can you say amen? That's what it means. But back in the day, if you would disrespect your mother and father, they'd take you out. They'll literally take you out, and then if it was bad disrespect, then they'll stone you. They'll kill you. I'm serious. It was that, that and I believe. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I spoke to a Muslim the other day, okay? And I spoke to him, and I said, I want you to tell me this. Huh? Hey, is it no? No, but I did speak to one there. Praise the Lord. But I said, I said, what have you noticed today? And I'm just respecting him as a man, respecting him as an elder. I said, what have you noticed today? He says, back in my day. He says, if the kids disrespect the elders like they do right now, I'll tell you what. I said, he notices that the most. He said, if an elder would come up on a bus and a kid would just sit there, not let the elder sit down, that elder had permission to grab that kid by the nose and pick him up and pull him off. Yeah, show him respect. But church, I'll tell you what, he's right. This day and age, there's many, many kids that do not respect their parents. They don't respect the elders. They don't understand who they have in the jewels of those that have lived on this earth. I've asked some of my elders, what can you tell me? Let me know. I'm crying. I'm saying, let me know what you're going through so I can, you know, not make the same mistake. Maybe I can learn something a little fresh. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm about to. I respect. I thank God as I was growing in the Lord, I noticed he put me with mighty men of God. He placed me together with them so I can learn, so I can come alongside and be a part of that. And not allowing the flesh to take over, not allowing the things of this world to kind of, you know, supervent me from going in one direction. But God said, this is where you must be. And I listened to my father. Can you say amen? Once again. This is a perfect definition of the acts that lead to sin. Just as a person takes a step of faith, in contrast, church, listen, there is a step of sin. Okay? There is a step of sin. These are the works of the flesh. It is a reflection of the heart. Every sin starts right here in the heart. Okay? That's where it starts. Now, we see the works of the flesh is, once again, a reflection. Now, 
These works have begun with a thought, a temptation, a desire, a fire that burned and was never extinguished by the Holy Ghost living water. James 1, 12 says, blessed is the man. How many of you like to be blessed? I like to be blessed. James 1, verse 12 says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he's saying you will be tried. You will have to go through it when he is tried. Not if, but when he shall receive the crown of life. Praise the Lord. That's the blessing which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And if you love him, as the Bible says, you're going to keep his commandments. Now, there's two ways to think of this. I want you to grab a hold of this. Now, we have trials and temptations. I can't wear these right now. But, woo, trials and temptations. Trying times are what will always meet a true born-again believer. Do you hear me? You will face it. Each and every one of us, you will face it, you will go through it, and you will make it to the end of the hardest, most difficult trial of your, li of your life if you stay connected to Jesus Christ. Amen. The most disheartening of times, you will have to walk through hell to get to heaven. Okay? You will have to walk through hell. To get to heaven. But understand this. You don't have to stay in hell. Woo! Praise the Lord of glory. You don't have to stay in hell to get to heaven. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Even though, even though, even though I'm going. Even though I'm going. I will fear no evil. No evil. I'm not going to fear evil. Any bad thing to come. This is the reason why. For thou art with me. Thy rod and your staff. They comfort me. They do comfort me. I know in that rod of power, but also there's some correction that comes along and that staff of correction that brings me in and protects me. And Brother Gene noticed and he said that hook, when we get down in that miry clay, we get into those clefts, those shepherds will utilize that hook. They won't have to reach down there when a sheep, a little sheep would get caught down there in the rocks or the cliffs. He would have to come up and take that hook and pick them up. And bring them out. I'm telling you right now, church, because of myself and my own stupidity at times, I find myself in those rocks and those cliffs and all stuck needing the shepherd to come. Get me out of it. Can you say amen? I'm glad I'm not preaching to the choir right now. We've all been in that position where we've been, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, my legs caught. <laughs> Help me out here. Come on now. Stuck in that old miry clay. Thank God we got a shepherd that loves us. Hallelujah. You will have to go through hell to get to heaven. I want you to get a hold of that. <laughs> you will have to go through hell to get to heaven. And praise the Lord. Jesus has the keys of both of them. <laughs> praise God. He also has the key to heaven. And he has the key to hell. What are you saying? He done opened it up in the sense of where I've got the power over death. Now, right now, we don't see it. We don't see we, as far as Christ having full power over death. You say, why so? Well, we're still having funerals. People are still dying. But as we understand the separation of what hell and heaven is, we know we've been redeemed. We've been redeemed by the blood of Christ. I've got a down payment inside my heart by the name of the Holy Ghost of glory. He's there letting me know I'm saved. I'm sanctified. And I'm telling you, I'm on my way to where glory is. And with that thought being said, I know one day this old body will be redeemed completely. Death has no hold. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with God. As soon as my eyes close on this side of eternity, I'll open them up in glory. Instantly bold. I won't have to go to a holding place of paradise. I won't have to go to Abraham's bosom. I will be on streets of gold. I'll be walking with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right then and there. Then you say, what about the Bible? Well, you can burn the body. You can put it in the ground. But the time will come when the trumpet will sound. And those that have died in Christ, they're going to get up. They say they're all their bones. I'm here to tell you right now. If God can say, let there be life, your body will come back together. When he said, get up out of the grave. But death's holding down. Death has been defeated. Death can't hold down anymore. That's what he means. Woo! Oh, praise the Lord. 
glory. Wherefore, comfort one another with those words. You see, he's already done it. He's already done it. That's what he's done. But you got to go through hell to get to heaven. Okay? You got to get there. I'm going there. You have to go and praise the Lord. He has the keys to both. Come on. He is my everything. You will be tried and you will be tempted. Come on. Okay? You will be tried and you will be tempted. You're not exempt. You will face it. The second we must understand this type of temptation. Look at this. James 1 verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. Come on. What does that mean? For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Hey, Come what on. Does that mean? God will never send you a wife who is another man's wife. Amen. Right. Woo. Come on. God will never send you a husband who is another woman's husband. Woo. You hear me? You hear me now? He said, oh, but the Lord brought us together. But she's still married. But the Lord no wants way. us to be together. No way. No, no, no. It don't work that way. No, it was God. No, it wasn't God that sent you her. It was the devil that tempted you. And your lust rose up inside of you. And now you got your eyes focused on another man's wife. Right. Come on. That's what happens. You say, wait a minute here. That don't make, don't make sense. Hold on. That don't make sense. You know, you got to tell me something here. You cannot, listen to me, the devil cannot make you sin. Can you say amen? But how do we recognize temptation? This is how. But every man is tempted, look at this, when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. His own, you own it. The devil ain't going to make you do nothing. The devil can't make you sin. He can't. He can't make you sin. He wants you to think he can. But, oh, i got to get back on this. I'm supposed to be teaching. Hold on. Hey. And it's not a sin. Listen to me. It's not a sin to be tempted. Okay? It's not a sin to be tempted. Pastor Corey has told you that for seven years. That devil will try to twist it around, make you feel guilty. Oh, you looked at that. Oh, you thought about that. Oh, you did. Oh, no, but wait, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I'm telling you right now, what the world tries to do is resurrect the dead. And let me get to that. There is a drawing away, church. A drawing away from Jesus. A drawing away from the straight and narrow. A drawing away from the divine order of God in your life. The Lord will never put evil in front of your eyes to test you and tempt you to sin. Hear me now. Come on. You guys are losing. I don't want to lose you right now, okay? The Lord will never put sin in front of your eyes and tempt you to sin. The world is doing that. Okay? The world is doing that. And this world will draw out that carnal, sensual nature out of the man or a woman. Okay? It is the world that is doing that. This world will try to raise the dead. And, and not like the Holy Ghost will do it to sounding of the trumpet. We just talked about that. But this world, led by Satan himself, will try to tempt and lure and raise that old man from the dead. See the contrast? That old man and that old woman that's supposed to be dead. I'm telling you right now, that world will try to resurrect them. Come on. Tempt them. In the come up out of that grave. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, the devil try to do it. Yeah. That Adam like disobedient carnal nature. He'll try to resurrect the dead. That devil will try to resurrect that old dead man. Say, Pastor, does he try to do that? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. In, seventh, in Matthew 7, as, uh, a Brother Gene so wonderfully bounced all around the message for tonight. Enter ye into the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, many there be which go there. Many. Everybody say many. Let your neighbors say many. many. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And few there be find it. There are times 
Well, we must put blinders on. Now, I asked my wife. I said, why? I said, why, why do they put those blinders on the horses? I'm going to tell you why they do. So they can focus on where they're going. Yeah, you can't sit there and have your eyes. and you. Know, some, I think sometimes they just need to put like a straight jacket on the neck, too. Come on now. But they got to put blinders on the eyes. Why they put blinders so that the horse don't get distracted? Don't get spooked. Don't get scared. Don't get lured in something that way. They got some sweet corn over there. woo Going on over there. No, you're on this road. You need to take me all his bodies the same way. We need to put Holy Ghost blinders on, church. Come on now. Now, I'm going to tell you, now, I want to be very careful because I know this is very sensitive, especially to men and women. Women, we got to watch what we wear. Amen. We other men. Okay? I'm telling you, we got to watch what we wear. We got to be understanding of the power that God has given you. All right? Now, listen to me. Women, it ain't all on you either. Men, you need to stop looking. Come on now. Don't be blaming those women over there. What you over there? Did you see what she wearing? No, I didn't notice. <coughs> why didn't you notice? Got my blinders on. <laughs> That's why I didn't notice. It ain't just about the ladies sitting there to wear, you know, and, and trying to find themselves. I'm here to tell you right now, ladies, once you've been born again, the most beautiful thing about you is your heart that is found in the Holy Ghost. And when that light comes out, I'll tell you what right now, that is the most beautiful thing. Not to be bringing up that old carnal desire trying to catch fish, anything. But man, you got to watch yourself now. You can't be sitting there and judging everything. Boy, I can't believe what she's wearing. I can't believe what she's wearing. I can't believe oh, God. Is, uh, she's supposed to be a Christian. Why are you staring at that, man? Come on. I'll tell you right now, I'm going to preach a message about ostrich Christians. Oh, Lord said, your eye calls you to sin. You need to plug it out. Yeah. You got no eyes. You ain't seeing what they be wearing now. Come on now. That's too hard for y'all right now. Right? Come on. That's too much right now. Come on, that's too much. But check this out. Same thing for men, too. Same thing for men. I'll tell you, and I'm trying, I'm balancing things out. To try to <laughs> you know how I wore that, I wore that sweater the other day. <laughs> I'll tell you the reason why I wore that sweater. I told my beautiful wife, I said, give me, give me a shirt, 2X. Well, she got me a 2X shirt, but that shirt was slim. I'm a husky. <laughs> big, big bone. I tell you what, if I put that thing on, Lord have mercy. Went from my t-shirt and that old Mr. Rogers sweaters I had on, Lord have mercy. Was, was that a skinny shirt? Yeah, slim, brother. It was slim. I can't, I can't get that around you. I thought, needless to say, needless to say, I was able to breathe when I took the cup buns like this. Like, Lord have mercy. But I'm telling you, church, I, as a whole, we got to watch now. Check this out. I'm not even talking about arousing the sexual aspect of it. I'm talking about wearing things that are still modest. There's no reason why we got to sit there and spend a hundred dollars on a hundred dollar shirt. Right. Amen. Come on. Preach it. There ain't no reason why a man of God needs to be preaching up here in a four or five hundred dollar suit. Wow. Come on. Right? Yeah. I know. You can't be allowing that to come in and take off, you know, because what it is, that brings in that desire, yep. that covetedness. Thou shalt not covet. Right. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's meal, thy neighbor's servant, thy neighbor's boat. Come on now, it's homes, it's dogs. Don't be over there. Don't be talking about the boat now. Talking about that boat now. Come on. You don't need to be. And the reason why he put that is because it brought it into the spiritual aspect of it. And that's exactly where we're getting in right now. It says right here, you've got to beware of false prophets. Are we okay with the clothes? You understand what Pastor's yeah. trying to say here? Yeah. As, as a Christian, we wear modest clothes, men and women alike. Right. Yeah. And don't be so judgy and say, I can't believe that. I'm telling you, men, you need to put blinders on. You need to. If you got a problem with that, you need to be putting your head. You need to be sitting over here. You need to be praying for God to keep you focused on what's ahead.
Praise the Lord. Yeah. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. Be aware of it. Why? You shall know them by fruits. They know them by fruits. The men gather grapes of thorns, of figs of thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, and a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree. Master, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. James 1.15. And sin, when it is finished, every time sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. Every time. Some of the mightiest men of God and women of God have been brought down because of sin. Either the desire for more money, the desire for somebody that's not your husband or your wife, the desire for prestige, and oh, I'm just going to go ahead and not, you know, preach the full gospel, just a portion of it. Just enough. I'm going to sweeten it up a little bit. And they compromise and they find themselves the end result. They lose it all. They lose it all. And I'm here to tell you right now, this man never in his life wants to have your blood on my hands. I want to make sure that everything I tell you, say to you, share with you, it is from this word and it's out of love. Because you know Pastor would even give his life for you. You know that. I love you all. I want to make sure you make it all the way to heaven. Praise be to the king. We'll make sure we get there all the way home. Praise God. What does it say then? It says here in John 10, 10. The thief, the thief coming not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I'm coming that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for sheep. I just want you to know two witnesses that I know you shared this word. There's another one sharing it together. So it's right in the eyes of God. Come Listen on. to me. The Bible says the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus says, I am come that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. And his life is reflected by the fruit of the Spirit. So, with that being said, we want to read Galatians 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is this, joy, peace. Excuse me, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. Have crucified. Look at your neighbor and say, have crucified. That means it is already done. It's finished. We must and remain walking in the spirit. It is finished. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, you will die. That's what the Bible says. If you live after the flesh, if you allow the carnal desires and that sinful desires to lead you, you will die. You will die. But if ye be, but if ye through the Spirit be mortified the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Now I'm gonna add nothing to that. Period. There it is. I gotta say, well, no, no, this is it. You want to live? You let the Lord lead you. You let the Lord guide you. You want to die? You let flesh keep taking over and see what happens. Not only will you die spiritually, the end result, you will die physically. There's two types of death. I even say that the other way. Not only will you die physically, but you will die spiritually. Is what will happen. <clears throat> now, period. That's what it is. For as many, but check this out. Verse 14. For as many as are led of the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Period. can't add nothing to that. I can't, oh, no, this is what it is. If you're led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage. This is what I love. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Come on. Okay? Now, check this out. If you're living in fear and your salvation, no, that's not of God. Why? Okay? Something's wrong there. You're listening to something. You're listening to your own conscience. You're, you're condemning yourself because you, you think you should be better than you actually are. Guess what? Each and every one of us go through that type of trial. 
You're going to have that thought, well, I'm not good enough. I haven't done enough. That I need to keep doing this. And, and, and there's a fear coming in that and tries to grip the soul. Check this out. As God, as I've said this, quoted this, one of my favorite scriptures, God says, I'm not giving you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. So if you feel the fear of losing your salvation, if you feel fear of not being able to overcome that sin, if you feel fear of stepping out and losing all, listen, you've got to step back a little bit and say, wait a minute here. I, I, am I relying on myself? Am I relying on my own abilities? Am I trying to save myself? Listen, nobody ever loses their salvation. Now, some of you old times are like, what are you saying, Pastor? Go oh, no. Nobody ever loses their salvation. They give it away. Come on. That's the truth. That's right. Praise the Lord. What's the first part of that, though? What do we normally, what do we, what do we, what's the first part? No. Submit yourself unto God. Ah. Resist the devil. A lot of people trying to fight the devil in their own ability, their own fight. You can't do it. Some of you are trying to crucify the flesh in your own ability. That's why the Lord keeps pushing his back. Point us to the spirit of God. That's what Pastor Corey's been trying to let you know. Listen, you, you've been feeling freedom, haven't you? You've been living. You've been enjoying what God's been doing. But the fight's not over with you. It's not over. Actually, it's even getting harder. The reason why it's getting harder is because God's about ready to open up something in your life that you never experienced before. As that old saying goes, it gets darker right before it gets brighter. That is the absolute truth. When God's getting ready to bless you and to bless you abundantly, it's coming. And you're going to see the biggest fight you got to deal with. I just this past couple weeks, as far as my financial and my mind, and I've always been one to, 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 to just hustle and make it happen. But I'll tell you, to be able to sit back and say, and then the mind starts going, you got to take care of this, you got to do that. The Spirit of God saying, I got you. Don't worry about it. Look at your bills are paid. You've got 150 potatoes in the bag right now. Hallelujah. You had the best Chinese food. I can eat a potato every day for half a year, for the Lord has blessed me. And you say amen. And he said amen. But I'll tell you what was scary is like, whew, I'll tell you this. What was really scary. I told my mom, I said, Mom, I said, I got $10. The rest of this week for gas. For two vehicles. I said, Lord have mercy. I said, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, Mom. And I found a penny on the ground. I said, Mom, I got $10 and one cent. <laughs> she goes, you messing with me? I said, well, it's a little hard right now. Let me tell you what happened. I went over to my shed. I got another shed by the name of Butter Tube. <laughs> I got Butter 1 with that beautiful car I have out there. And I got a shed that's Butter 2. Same color. <laughs> I'm walking along the side of it. And I got some pallets there with some stuff on top of them trying to get rid of. And I come over there. And I've got two five-gallon gas jugs full of gas. Come on. I stuck them back in there about three, four months ago, and I believe it's that wreck fuel too. It's on there next. That's good, man. That's that good. That's that wreck fuel. It ain't going. It's okay. It's whole. It don't have none of that that ethanol in there that ruins it in about a week. It ain't turning nothing green. It's still fresh. So I'm telling you right now, ten gallons of gas I've already had, already supplied. Didn't even know it. Can you say? Come on. Man? Now before it had been like, Lord have mercy. What are we going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Same thing we always do. Trust God. Listen, if God can save you, if God can give you his life for you, don't you think he can take care of the rest of you for the rest of your life? Come on. What do you think about that? It's hard. It's hard. To, and, and listen, just in that realm, especially the responsibility of being a dad, being a father, but also knowing as a pastor, if I tell you God's going to heal your body, you better believe it. Because I believe it. I know God's going to do it. I know right now I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Uh -huh. If 
I can say that, I believe God can put another 10 gallons of gas in my car that I already have. Can you say? Right. I'm telling you, church, what you already have in you is enough for tomorrow. tomorrow. You hear me right now? Tomorrow's temptation, what you already have in you through the Holy Ghost and glory, is enough to face that tomorrow. Church, we're here today, and today is the day of salvation. And right now, tomorrow's not promised, but I promise you this, God is already in the tomorrow. And what he's already given you today is enough for your tomorrow. Oh, praise the Lord of glory, church. You got to hear him, Pastor, right now. Right now, each of us, I know we're dealing with some things, maybe some physical things. You think you ain't going to make it, but guess what? God still got you, don't he? He's still keeping you right now. That doctor said this, that, and the other, but God said, no, this, that, and me. It's what it is. I I am that I am. I am that I am. What do you need? I am that need maker. I'll go ahead and make the ends meet. When it seems so far away, I'll fill every gap with my grace and mercy. And you see it come through. Church, God will not let you down. Can you say amen? Amen. The struggle, the struggle of fear and faith, keep and lose. We'll never lose our salvation, church. Hear me. We'll just give it away. Now, this is when it really starts getting good. <laughs> what time is it, church? Rejoice. Time to rejoice. Two fruits. I want to talk to you real quick about meekness. What is meekness? Give me an answer. What is meekness? Meekness. Being humble. That's right. Good. It, meekness is exactly that. It, it is gentleness with power. Okay? And I want to share this with you in about three or four minutes and we'll get on out of here. Gentleness with power. The fire Bible brings it out like this. Refers to the quality shown by mild friendliness and forbearance, especially to an enemy when harshness would be the expected behavior. That is being slack and turning the other cheek. The Bible says that Moses in number 12, or Numbers 12, Numbers 12, it is, it's Numbers 12. Numbers 12. <laughs> Verse 3, it says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all men which were upon the face of the earth. Why was he had to be meek? I'm going to tell you, his family was talking about him. It says right here in Numbers 12, verse 1, And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses, spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? They're trying to say, Hey, has not the Lord spoke to us? Or can the Lord spoke to us, speak to us? Well, the Lord heard of that. And here they are talking against this man of God. Come on. And they're saying, Hey, cannot God speak to us too? The Lord said, Meet me at my house. Come on. He called all three of them over. So once you stand right here, the Bible says the Lord come down in a pillar of fire and says, I have spoken to prophets. I'll give them visions and dreams. But Moses, my man, I'm talking mouth to mouth. He's saying basically what I say, Moses says. What Moses says is what I'm saying. Come on. He's letting them know that this man right here, I'm not showing him visions and dreams. I'm not showing him dark sayings and, and prophecy. I'm talking to him just like I'm talking to you right now. There's Miriam. She's sitting back. The Bible says the Lord got mad. When the Lord left, Miriam ended up getting leprosy. Uh -huh. Talking about the man of God. Sitting there talking about the man of God. There he is. Can't, can't God speak to us too? Lord, look at it. Yeah, there we go. <coughs> I'll tell you two things that happened real quick as far as being me. Turning the other cheek. I had a certain lady that I'll tell you what have ever talked bad about me and my family. I mean, ran that gator. I mean, just, oh, Lord, just ran it. This gator, the gator she was running, it was hard to catch to her. <laughs> just talking about it. I'll tell you, you know what the Lord did? The Lord took care of that. It kind of bothered me to begin with, you know. I was like, man, she's, she's, she's speaking of fools, she's She's lying. She's, she's causing trouble where there is no trouble. But the Lord took care of it. Yeah, the Lord took care of it for me. And I'm not going to tell you how the Lord took care of it, but praise God, she's still alive. Hallelujah. But I'm being real, you know, the Lord took care of it. 
And I didn't have to say anything, I didn't say anything, nothing. But I tell you what, the conversations change. Don't mess with God's anointing. Regardless if you disagree or not, be careful. Because right? it is the Lord that will fight for us. And you are anointed. Once you're born again, that anointing you get, praise be to the King from the Spirit, that's your anointing. You are anointed in that capacity. There's another man that I'll tell you this, and we're going to get out of here. One of my favorite stories. He used to be my old boss, man. He come in there one day, and I was I was saved for about, I say, good three, four weeks, about a month. Fresh. Brother Wall, he come in pushing my buttons early in the morning. And I'm just doing everything I can not to say anything, just like I know you would have too. Somebody sitting there talking about you like that, trying to push your buttons. Right? Somebody pushes your buttons, y'all don't say nothing, do you? Y'all quiet. You don't, you don't try to retaliate, y'all. Come on now. You don't, you, you don't retaliate, do you? You're meek. You're meek. You let that spirit just all, oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, yeah, there, right there. Oh, come here, come here. Give me, oh, give me that other one right there. Yeah, we'll give you a hug. Let me show. Oh, you guys just do that. <laughs> Don't you know? I'll tell you, I had to do everything I could to suit. Lord. You know, that's why he gives us lips and teeth. Praise be to the king. Two gates to hold that tongue back. Because I'll tell you, I about lost it all right there. I walked out that office. And I got in that truck. And I'll tell you what. If he was next to that truck. <laughs> and I look like the Tasmanian devil from Looney Tunes inside of that truck. But that day, sadly, that man went to go work some cows. But that last bowl that came through. Got a hold of him. I'm talking broke collarbone. Punctured lungs, put him in the hospital for weeks. And I'm thinking to myself, Lord, I didn't want all that to happen. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. Oh, I'll tell you, through all the devil has to do, I'm going to be real, not with this crew right here, because you guys are here, let's stand up. But I'll tell you, all the devil has to do, and you know this to be true, Brother David, with those that are kind of, uh, all the devil has to do is one time have somebody smack you across the cheek and you don't walk out the church and done it. One time, just... <laughs> And why, why does, why do people do it? I'm going to tell you why. They can enjoy some of the love. Praise be to God. That's the first part of it. But they haven't quite matured meekness yet. And I found out nine times out of ten, well, I'll say that seven times out of ten. Majority of the time, what's taken, what's said, is a misunderstanding. What was said wasn't meant to be said like that, or you heard it wrong. Married 22 years. And I've said things to my wife. And she goes, and you just said this. I didn't say that at all. Well, that's what I heard. I know that's what you heard. That's not what I said. When the fruit of meekness produces and matures a person. You're going to see God will fight your battles for you. You don't have to defend yourself in any way. But God will go ahead and take care of business. Now the reason why people don't get to that point because that is the last meekness and temperance is the last two fruits ever to be produced. But all those have to come in through. Just Christian joy, love, happiness, all patience. Oh, everyone pray for patience. But don't let me get to that face. Let me get to that. Let me get to that. Church, we need to have that. Okay?